what is good y'all this right here is tony southpaw reviews i'm back here with another video for our favorite show dark matter and we're back here with another episode and this episode is titled in the fires of dead stars you know like galaxies exploding and stuff well buckle up because that's kind of what's happening with our boy jason's see these dead stars they're not just celestial light shows they represent the remnants of something once bright and powerful now just a burnt up husk think of it like that feeling you get after a bad breakup you loved them once but now they're dead to you floating around in the vast emptiness of space and that's kind of where our jasons are at jason one is bouncing through realities desperate to find his way home jason two Dude's acting like a supernova, volatile, unpredictable, and threatening to take everyone down with him. So yeah, In the Fires of Dead Stars ain't just a fancy title, it's a metaphor for the emotional wreckage that these Jasons are leaving in their wake. But hey, maybe there's a flicker of life in those dead stars just yet? Maybe Jason 1 can find his way back home? Maybe Jason 2 can redeem himself? I doubt it, but hey, a man can dream. But first, all you new folks, I need you to do me a solid, right? I don't normally do this, but I've noticed that the videos are starting to get a little bit more views, right? The last one had like 1,300 views. I'm only seeing like 100, 150 likes, and the math ain't mathed. Please, I love doing this for you guys. Do me a big favor, and please, please smash that like button, subscribe, or just watch more of these awesome reviews. If you stumbled onto episode 7 without seeing the first 6, I got you covered. There's a link to the playlist chilling in the description below and I stickied it as the first comp. Now, on to Dark Matter. Our boy Jason 2's back after ditching Ryan somewhere acting like ain't nothing happened. Daniela is super suspicious, especially since Ryan ain't answering his phone no more. Jason 2 acts like ain't nothing happening and is out here making something that looks like prison food on a good day. And then... Boom, suddenly out of nowhere, Detective Mason is back. We saw her way back in like episode 2 or 3 when she was at Velocity investigating the missing people from there. And now she's snooping around asking about Ryan's disappearance too. Jason 2 plays it dumb and starts making stuff up about Ryan hitting the bar a little too hard. And he keeps playing dumb after the detective leaves, but Daniela doesn't <laughs> seem to trust that effing word coming out this man's mouth. She decides now's the time to confront Jason about the vial that she found in the storage locker. Jason spills some of the beans, admitting what it is, but clams up when Daniela gets curious and starts asking for details. She kind of buys it, but the gears are still turning in that beautiful head of hers. We then switch to Jason 1, and we learn that Jason and Amanda have been on this bad multiversal Uber ride for 29 years days 29 days this imposter has been living his life and sleeping with his wife and they ain't been home yet amanda says that look we need a break and she takes the lead she opens the door and what we see is like a wakandan chicago with better weather now i know what some of you are thinking some folks in the comments suspect amanda's got ulterior motives now I've been seeing what y'all been saying about how Jason Prime hasn't been able to find his way home because of Amanda's desire to be with this Jason. <laughs> Hold that thought. Anyway, yeah, this place looks incredible. It looks like something out of an X-Men comic with Krakoan trees and flowers everywhere and an Obama building in Chicago because yes, we can. Something real interesting about this world is that this Chicago has fusion energy hotter than a rap battle between Drake and Kendrick. Well, maybe not anymore, but for those of you who don't know, regular fusion is the kind that powers stars and probably gives your microwave nightmares. Needs temperatures hotter than dragon's breath on a bad day. We're talking about it needs millions of degrees, folks, and that's not exactly achievable by just turning on the kitchen stove. Cold fusion? Hmm. That's a conspiracy scientist's dream. 
It's the idea that you can fuse atoms, basically turn regular boring elements into superpowered ones at room temperature. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, that's kind of the problem. Scientists have been chasing this cold fusion dragon for decades. There's been some breakthroughs, sure, but nothing solid enough to power your fault, let alone your whole house. So for now, cold fusion is more like a scientific urban legend than a reliable energy source. Unless you want to risk your apartment turning it into a mini sun, I wouldn't hold your breath for a cold fusion revolution anytime soon. Next thing, we see that Jason and Amanda are on a flat out date and Amanda's pulling out all the stops. She's got on this sexy green dress trying to give J-Lo a run for her money and shoots her best, best shot like Sabrina Ionescu with an NBA Jam cheat code and she tells Jason flat out, look, this world is beautiful. She's tired and she has great credit and money on this world and asks Jason, to stay here with her in order to make a life together. Jason looks like he gives it some serious thought. Like he was really thinking about it for like half a second before he decides to stay loyal when he tells her that he's not giving up on Jennifer Connelly. I mean, Daniela, just yet. Amanda gives him the hug of his life and even lays one right on him hoping he regrets his decision before he scuttles back off into the box and realizing he only has three vials of Ryan's gamma radiation left. Aww. Jason goes into the corridor and tries finding his earth again. This time, he's alone. And I gotta admit that it's starting to look kind of hopeless. It gets to a point where he starts visiting alternate worlds and he starts stalking the Daniellas of those worlds. He even calls one of them. He even starts watching them sleep and it's starting to get all sorts of weird. One of the worlds is real similar too and I got to admit for half a sec I was wondering if my boy Jason finally made it home. Like is this it? And it was seeming like it was until he gets caught sneaking around the house by his son. And when he says, hey, Charlie, he's correcting. And the boy is like, nah, it's your other son, Max. And whoa, whoa, Max, Mick, yo. Hitting Jason with more feels than Mufasa's death scene in The Lion King. And he starts talking to Max and getting all emotional. And then Max gets sad and starts talking about a different kid who passed away. Like, is it a daughter? And Jason is torn up from meeting the son who didn't survive in his world. And yo, dark matter. We then see Jason too in therapy again. And he is talking about running away from this world and never coming back. And I swear, this dude needs to find a hobby. Therapy ain't going to fix a personality. And it's almost as if Jason is looking for Amanda to give him permission to walk away from his wife and kid. Amanda doesn't give him what he wants, acting like she saw worse breakdowns at clown college talent shows. But what happens next is downright diabolical. Jason systematically and psychologically dissects Amanda using the knowledge about his Amanda against her. And damn, that is narcissistic. She gets upset and kicks his crazy ass out like she don't ever want to see him again. We then see Jason too getting confronted by that detective again and she's getting close. She tracked Lorraine's phone to the factory place and even throws Jason a not so subtle threat that she's coming for that ass. Jason too has seemingly had enough of this place and heads back to the factory to start unlocking the box that he just locked last episode in concrete. We see him hammering away at it with a sledgehammer before entering inside. We then see this Jason in God knows what world and he's at a bar drinking with a whole new Ryan. 
And it's at this point we realize that Jason 2 is out here collecting Ryan's like Pokemon cards. This new mechanic Ryan is having a good time but is also as confused as a fish out of water. Dude probably thinks he woke up in a bad episode of Black Mirror and explains how a DUI messed up his senior year in high school and ruined his chances of being a scientist. We then see Jason 2 emerging from the box with his new mechanic Ryan in tow. He washes him up, cuts his hair after getting him pissy drunk and drops him off at Ryan's home thinking ain't no way anybody's gonna notice the difference and mine gosh this mofo is evil. Like how many ops he got? He got too many options. You can't just keep doing this. Can you? We then finally switch back to Jason 1 and my guy is down at his last vial. The last vial. This is it. After this, ain't no more tries. So my guy gives it his absolute best shot by writing down his notes, trying one more time. He thinks of Daniela and we get a few shots of Jennifer Connelly looking absolutely radiant before he heads back into the corridor, thinking of his wife, opening the door and... Oh sugar, he did it! He did it! We see the broken concrete from the sledgehammer and everything and our boy, he did it! He found his earth with the vials on the floor and everything. We then see Jason 1 running through his test to see if he's on the right world and this is the best way, right? Because he goes to the bar and the bartender confirms that he's home when he recognizes him. Jason then starts awkward running down the streets of Chicago to get home. He gets to the house where we see Jason cautiously observing things before heading inside. And we see Jason too getting back to the house trying to explain how, hey guys, Ryan is home now. And he was just out drinking heavy in Indiana. Jason 1 figures it's time to solve this problem. So he goes to the problem solving store, aka the gun store. He heads inside and tries to buy a gun, but learns the hard way that you need to have a gun license in Illinois. He ain't got one, so he ain't buying no gun today. In the meantime, he buys a Caribbean approved big ass knife and some pepper spray. He leaves to go handle things, but this is where the weirdest thing happens when we see him like a few moments later walking back into the gun store to buy a gun. But for some reason, he doesn't remember ever being here. And the staff is looking at him like amnesia is hitting them harder than student loan debt. It's only when the teller asks him if he has a twin and what the this Jason has a brace on his finger, which the last guy that we just saw enter the store didn't have. <laughs> he realizes like, yo, what is going on with someone here that just looked like me just here? They said he was and he runs out the store to find him, but he doesn't see anybody and end credits. And what the what? Like, what the actual what? What did we just see? What did we just see? Now, I don't normally do this, but I want to go back and just take a look at this scene again, just for this scene right here, okay? Now, the lady at the gun store noticed the brace on his finger as a way to differentiate him from the Jason who just left. And we usually use the scar on Jason's nose to tell the difference between Jason 1 and Jason 2. But these two Jasons are identical. Same jacket, same scar, same everything except for that one difference. Yo, this show right here, this show, Dark Matter, I love this. And I can't wait for you all to see what happens in the next episode. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. If you're new to the Fast and Funky Phone reviews, like I said earlier, please hit that like button, subscribe, and check us out next week. Until then, peace.